Yeah, Shetty. Yo. Hey, guys. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We can hear you. Okay, great, guys. How you doing? Uh, oh, good. Oh, good. How are you? Good, good. I uh, I supposed to train, but uh, I don't feel well. So sometimes you need to listen to your body, right? Uh, yeah, true, true. How's your rehab going? It's good. It's going good with a knee. So uh, I'm like a hundred person in training with uh, with my team. So uh, yeah, I'm supposed to get a to play the last two games, mm. but yeah, didn't make it. But it's okay. January, it's again games. So good, good, good. Are you back? Are you fully back now with the with team training? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. So, uh, you know, you know that Ferdi, Ferdi is a physio, so uh, that's why he's caring about you. Yeah, he told me. Yeah. He told me. Uh, that's why I'm yeah. just asking questions, and I've uh, I've uh, I've rehabbed a few ACL before, so. Um, um so that's why i'm asking like um how did where did you get the graft in the patella or the hamstring 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 yeah. Oof. is the hamstring all tight or you sorted that out to be honest it was pretty weird because the first five months of the rehab i felt anything i didn't feel anything in my hamstring and then with a bit more of a pitch training, football training. I filled it uh, always beginning of the session mm -hmm. and only with uh, playing inside foot, like a pass, short pass, mm -hmm. long pass was, was fine. But yeah, and it took like two, three months. And yeah, it was just like irritation. But now it's, 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 it's all good. Good, good. But yeah, but I heard from the physios that sometimes it is like this. Mm. On the beginning, you don't feel it. Then you feel it mm. a bit, and sometimes on the end of the of the rehab, but yeah, now it's good. Mm. That's good. Keep doing the eccentric, isometric stuff. We should we should fix that straight away. Well, you probably yeah, know yeah, yeah. yeah. Now also a lot of Nordics and uh, hamstrings yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But also when we when we test it on a, like a, like a note board, you know. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's just like three, four percent difference between left and uh, and right hamstring. So that's yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you're yeah. you're you're perfectly fine then. I think I think it's better than it was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What was your approach? What was your um? What was what was your findings like? Did you find out oh, why it happened? Did you find out because when when I seen how you did it, it was more like non-contact. It was like when it turned. Um, what was your approach? What did you? What's the things that you worked on? What's the? What was your mindset at the time when you had that injury? Well, <clears throat> even now when I look back, it's like uh, I'm trying to remind myself the the time the weeks before it happened. Mm. And uh, yeah, I remember last game before it happened. I think it was the worst uh, worst game in my life. Mm. We we lost four uh, nil, and uh, was was after thirty minutes was already four nil. And yeah, I played really bad, and yeah, I know for, for many people playing on that level it's not not that important, but for me it was the most important thing in the world, mm. and. Yeah, and I remember the whole week struggling with sleep. Tried to just do some something extra, extra training, mm -hmm. and just just wanted to improve and get back. And then a week after, this happened in mm -hmm. yeah, thirty minutes something like that. So it was not even the second half of the game. But yeah, when I look back, I know that these small things matter, and uh, yeah. It's important to to be fit, but also to yeah, don't think about stuff you you shouldn't be thinking. Being on the field and yeah, 
Yeah, so like a lot of people don't understand like where cloud management, like learning when to stay clear, when learning when to push forward, learning when to prioritize recovery, learning that, and they think, oh yeah, um, I'll do all of this training, but I'm gonna go out. I'll do this yes. all training, but I'm gonna go to see someone. I'm gonna do like they don't understand like the recovery is part of training. And um, it's so important to get that fine balance and to kind of that's why me and Patrick they're like we're on we're on like whoop we do this we're like analyzing everything and we're like oh yeah um I've, I've had three days of but I've not been feeling too well I've been feeling a bit uh, tired all the time but I'm having eight hours sleep but it's been saying 30 30 percent recovery 30 30 I'm like I know I'm gonna get sick soon yeah. and then next day. I get a cold or a fever or I don't feel well. And I'm like, yeah, I can read it. Um, I feel like if people had that, then they can like, like you said did today, not feeling it. So I'm going to yeah. take a, a little bit of a break. Uh, having that, I think that comes with maturity and like um, over time when they get older, like when you was a kid, you're thinking, yeah, I'll recover quick. I'm 19. I can do three, four sessions in one day. Da, 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 da. But as you get older, you need to kind of listen to your body and focus more on the intensity and the less on volume. Yeah, um, yeah. But like I said, it's such an important skill to have. And like, um, yeah, it's always from, quality over quantity. Yeah. And apart from that, could pick up that skill and that maturity. Is there anything, obviously, because of the ACL injury, is such a long, long rehab. Did that change you as a person? Did you pick up anything, any, any skills, any experiences? But did, did you learn more about yourself? No, for sure, for sure. And, uh, oh, sorry, I'm back? Yeah, 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 you're yeah, back. Good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And also my approach was to just, just give everything because mm. I was at the time 23 years old. Mm. Just came, just came to the new country. Or oh, oh, yeah, it was my my second season here, and uh, was pretty good, but I played only four games, <laughs> and then mm. this happened. But yeah, my approach was to just just give everything, and and uh, yeah, that was to be honest, the only one focus for me in the last twelve months was just the rehab, mm. and. Uh, and yeah, uh, luckily I could do that. I could uh, focus only on this. On my uh, yeah, I'm getting back on the field. Mm. But yeah, for sure, learn a lot of things about myself, and also even more about yeah, listening to your body. Mm. And uh, yeah, I don't know if it's like you said the injury, or just the maturity. That I think two three years ago, you know, when I'm not feeling fine this week. Mm. I think I, I still still I would go on the beach till I would go to the gym and, and do something mm -hmm. extra. But yeah. now I know you know you're not you're not gonna get anything from that. So Yeah, hundred mm. percent. Yeah, Eric, so you mentioned that you, you moved to Holland recently and uh, you also lived in Norway as well and uh, talk us through how uh, how did you find it moving the countries and uh, what did you learn in uh, in both of these countries, Norway and Holland? Oh, it's good to see you, man. I didn't yeah, see you a long yeah. time. <laughs> oh, you got a beard as well as me. Good, good. <laughs> no, it's, I'm still, I'm still a kid, man. <laughs> it's yeah. coming, it's coming, it's coming. You'll get there, boys. Now, Don't worry. Ah, uh, maybe ten years, ten years <laughs> later. <laughs> but yeah, uh, moving to Norway was also, an a bit different stage of my life. I just get 18 and uh, yeah, had a big dreams. I just, uh, just uh, tried to get a chance anywhere and uh, get exposed, and play, play. But yeah, I found it difficult, even though my, my parents were living there. But yeah, even the language. I don't know if, about you, Patrick, but for me, the first month was just felt comfortable because everyone was speaking English. So I thought, no, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna learn Norwegian. 
Yeah, that's and, true. That's true with Norway. But, right. But of course, yeah, I think that on the pitch, there is one language and you don't need to study uh, three months to, to learn the basic comments and just give uh, give some uh, tips to your, uh, your teammates. But uh, outside the pitch, it's so important to, to, to speak their language because like kind of a social life and team building, yeah, it makes it so easier. And, and mm. it's also super important, it's also very important. So I think that was the the the, the biggest lesson I uh, I got from Norway, and also I experienced that because I think after seven eight months, I just said okay I need to speak I need to speak Norwegian, and I just yeah I just started and I learned it. Okay, so the snack and then, No, no, nice. not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, not anymore. But yeah, when I uh, when I was uh, August, I was in Norway to visit my parents. Yeah, it, I understand that, but it feels like I need a warm up. I don't know, but of <laughs> course I didn't didn't use it for nearly four years. But do you speak Norwegian now, Patrick? Yeah, I can speak Norsk. There is no problem. Bare lit. Yeah, bare lit. <laughs> yeah, do you was... speak? How do you speak bro, Norwegian with your teammates? With uh... yes, yes, I speak. But uh, tell us, bro, you're the main guy here. Tell us about uh, how was Holland. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's it's great. It was also a bit uh, difficult with the uh, with the COVID because uh, when we came here, I came here with my girlfriend, and yeah, I just just wanted to play and find a club. It was the first thing. I was so difficult this time. Like all the clubs, I mean, uh, let's say third, second division, they they didn't train, they didn't play. So when I contact everybody, they said, "Yeah, but not now." <laughs> it was basically, "Yeah, it would be nice. We would like to see you, but yeah, we don't train. We we can't offer you contract. We we can't get you." So yeah, and that was basically, I think, eight months like this. Luckily, I found a local small club. Well, no, it was not a small club, but they they played that time pretty low. And yeah, they train. They just train twice a week, and uh, yeah. and every week they play the game against the under twenty three team. So yeah, I could train. That was the most important. But yeah, it was uh, was it difficult, and I found it also. I think with experience from Norway, I just. I just uh, learned uh, Dutch straight away. I think yeah. I start uh, I started learning Dutch even before I came here. So uh, yeah, and of course I didn't speak perfect the first month, but I was uh, I was brave enough to just just do it and yeah. Yeah, and of course it's funny because you make a lot of mistakes, but I I think it's the only the only one way to learn. And to yeah break it a little bit because I think it's not easy to just start speaking in a different language, but yeah, it's so important. It's so important. Yeah, yeah. What's Eric... your what's your um what's the difference in style of play? Like for example, in Poland and for example in uh, in Holland and Norway. What did you pick up and learn differently in each country? Um. Um, even like culture wise, was there any culture shock or anything like that in your experience when you, especially when you moved there at an eighteen? It's not something. It's not you. You're just saying there uh, at eighteen. Uh, like it's something normal, but it's not normal <laughs> yeah, <laughs> compared yeah, to yeah. the whole worldwide. Not everyone does that. Um. So, what triggered that? Obviously, I know your hunger for football and wanting to make it uh, to get exposure. But like, what kind of what did you learn through that journey? Yeah, well, it was not like a culture shock because, yeah, I also like like your previous guest. I'm open minded and I'm just mm. I'm willing to to learn the different culture. And I think with Norway, it was 
was not the first time I was there because I I visited my uh, my father there before. But yeah, the difference in in style of play. It's I think it's a bit difficult for me to say because in Poland I played on pretty high level, but in an academy, not in a, not in a senior football, mm. or at least not a lot. And then in in Norway it was straight away like a senior team, the division. But I don't know why, but between Norway and uh, and Holland, I I just feel like here it's it's just. A, higher level like every every tire you compare it feels like here it's a bit faster but mm. i don't i don't mean the faster as a players faster yeah the play is faster mm. because also when i think about this uh, in norway if I, if i'm not wrong but i think we used to train like four or five times a week in third division mm. right patrick yeah yeah, yeah. It was like this, right? Mm. And I know that here, even third division teams, they train three times a week. Mm. Interesting. So yeah, yeah. That's why I I don't know why, to be honest. But it feels like the game is faster. The 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 tempo is is higher. And, yeah. Uh, it is it is in the top five, top six <laughs> leagues in terms of countries uh, in the whole yeah. field. I mean, so that doesn't surprise me a bit. And a lot, a lot from what I see um, based on transfer market and stuff, like the Dutch league is a feeder league to the Scandinavian countries, from what I found. Like a lot of like, a lot of players from Iceland or Norway, top tier, or Sweden, or Finland, they end up going to, to Dutch, Denmark, they end up yeah. going to like the Dutch league all the time. But either the Dutch or the German league, like, it's very common you see that pathway happening. So it doesn't surprise me that it's a little bit of a step up in terms of the tempo and the speed of play. So, yeah. Um, yeah. You've mentioned your time at playing at a high academy level uh, with Poznan. Um, yeah. How was that experience? What age did you start from? Um, how did you get scouted? How did you get picked up? And tell us more about that. Well, it started like uh, when I was 14. And... Uh, yeah, to be honest, I was just looking for a chance. I I wanted to get to the other club on a high level. And uh, yeah, when I was thinking about this yesterday, even from my parents, they, they really helped me. And mm. they just said, you know, it's your dream and we're going to help you. We're going to try to find something. So I was just I was just searching for an opportunity. And I don't remember exactly. But I think I just uh, I just went there for like an open training, mm. and then and then then they they invited me again, and uh, yeah I just got there. But the, yeah, the difference between the levels and small detail, yeah, it was it was huge. Mm. That's I think that's what I uh, that's what I remember the most the details like the coaches. The staff was more professional, and uh, and the coaches always said like, if if there is drill, if there is an exercise, we perform it one hundred percent. And when it's uh, it's done, and you go uh, take a sip of water, drink anything, but you you need to run there. You don't go there. Mm. So, yeah, it's, it's a small <laughs> thing. It's a small thing, but yeah, just the intensity, and also yeah, give give everything always. And even yeah, I I <laughs> I noticed this a few years ago, already here in Holland, that when we finished the drill here, I was running on the sideline to get the water, and mm. not, nobody that nobody does it, and they were just mm. looking at me, what, what are you doing? Why yeah, are you, you you're stronger or what? And I was just no, I don't know. It's like it's like automatic. I don't know. Mm. But yeah, it, I, yeah, I think it helps on the it helps on the field also. Being more focused. Hmm. What habits have you picked up that um separated you from the rest when at your time, Poznan and um, Holland, uh, Norway? What kind of habits uh, is you feel like this has stepped up my game a little bit? This has changed my mindset a little bit. 
Mm, that's a good question. And I think I, I just, I always give everything, you know, and mm. I do things only when I, when I enjoy it, but also yeah. when I know that I can put everything, that I can yeah. put the work on it. And yeah, I'm not struggling with, uh, you know, working hard. Yeah. Because I like it and it makes me happy also. Mm. And that's, yeah, I think that's the main difference. On the, at least on the teams where I've been. Yeah. You're very disciplined. Yeah, you can say. Yeah. Intentional see, discipline. That's what I've picked up. Sorry? Intentional and disciplined. So you do everything with intent. You just don't just do it. You do it with like pure focus, yeah. pure like um, intention to do it. Uh, with, like, um, hundred percent on like um having it in the mindset to divide than just turn up. If that makes sense. Yeah. But I think yeah. It's like also with uh, with my rehab. Because you know the players, on level I play. I think if something like this happens, they're gonna train. Twice, maybe three times a week. Mm hmm. And I train six times a week. Yeah. And also, you know, the physios ask me, okay, but are you willing to, to put the work, to put the time? Or we can do it the way, you know, twice a week, three times a week. And it also will be fine to play on that level. Mm. But, but at the end, I need to look in the mirror and ask myself, yeah, did I give everything? Mm. Because because if something is, uh, let's say I'm I can't play anymore because that also happens, and then I need to ask myself, did I do everything? Mm. Now I know I did. Yeah. So even you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, hundred percent. Having that um, that like Kobe Bryant man mindset. What did you do? If I could do, did it? It's like having that man there mindset yeah. which is so important and a lot of um, kids these days coming from academy they don't have that they're kind of privileged um, and speaking of which we always ask this to every guest we have did you have a mentor did you have someone that you can that you could look up to um, inside or outside of football that guided you in the right path and stuff like that because we understand the importance of having the correct um support system network system to kind of help you facilitate that career hmm. to be honest not really but i think at a young age i figure out that you can get inspired and get to learn something from absolutely everybody mm. and sometimes it's positive sometimes it's something negative mm -hmm. but you can you can just yeah you can learn a lot from everybody you just need to kind of notice it and and then just yeah discover it yeah interesting and uh, can you tell us about your ambition in life what, what you want to achieve what's your like uh, do you want to be just a number when you die like okay one of 20 or do you want to be actually remembered as a name so me eric i did this and i'm proud of it What's uh, what's nah, you know I, you know for sure I would like to play on as 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 high level as possible, because that's still my my biggest passion, and uh, I think I would really like to do something for a diabetes community, mm. and it, it would be connected with the sports because I think it's 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 really important for diabetes but also for mental health mm. so uh, yeah these are my plans but i'm still young and i'm i'm sure that there will be there will be more plans in my head mm. and also i don't two years ago i would say yeah I, I don't want to work as a coach i don't want to work as a physio because because it's like uh having a nice car but you can you can just watch it. You cannot drive it. 
Mm. Because I just I just love to play football. But now mm. when I'm older, I'm thinking, you know, working in the in, in the football is could be nice. Yeah. I would I'd I'd never say never and I'd never say no. Because even like for example for me, I always said oh, I just want to play football, I just want to play football, I just want to play football. And even the coach would be like, Yeah, but listen, anything can happen to you. Just have something as a backup plan. I'm like, No, don't have a plan B, go plan A. The and then I realised that even if you do have a backup plan, you don't have to necessarily work on it, but you learn the little details and the little um trades of the game. Um, for example, for me, physio, the importance of biomechanics, this and that. And I even like because like not every physio, not every coach knows everything. But if you have your foundation, you can cover yourself from that aspect because only you you know your body best. Same thing, coaching or uh, a tactical analyst, analyst coach or whatever. Only you know what you need to work on or what you see and what the scenarios you go through. So you giving yourself that knowledge and like covering all bases kind of takes your game an extra little edge. Um, so that's why I end up going kind of like, do you know what? I study and I play at the same time, and it's paid off. Uh, like because now I can recognize, oh, feel my knee a little bit. What could it be? And then I'd be doing it, and then I'd be like, ah, oh, now I know what it is, and I fix it before it starts to become a problem, rather than be like, ah, oh, it's just a little little niggle, ah, oh, it's just a, and then bang, something happens. Yeah. Um, so now I know like um the importance of like. You know, being a student of the game all the time. Yeah. No, no, you're right. You're right. And as a kid, it was always like this. No plan B. Plan B yeah. is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. But, it's never it's never a reality. And uh, you can always, you always do what's in your control and always, like, make sure you leave no stones unturned. That's well, what we say in the UK. Leave no stone on ten. Make sure you do everything. Um, so that's what um I picked up from my life. Um, so what's next for Eric? I know you've you're very passionate with the uh, diabetes community and stuff like that. Tell us more about that. Why? Um, let us know. Like, can you tell and elaborate more about the diabetes topic? Yeah, it's. <laughs> I have diabetes since I was six years old. So I almost mm. don't remember I was living without it. Mm. But yeah, it it definitely doesn't help. It mm. doesn't uh, make your life easier. It's uh, it's opposite. But yeah, I think if you control it, you can live a happy and a long life and you can mm. do absolutely everything you, you can. But yeah, when I was a kid, I think I missed somebody who could show me that it's it's possible, you know? Mm. I didn't know anybody with diabetes who plays football. I didn't know anybody who yeah, was kind of famous, you know? Mm. And now it's getting, yeah, getting more exposed. And, but I think also people are getting more educated and, mm. and they know more about this uh, condition. Mm. But that that's also my goal to to spread this. Sorry, it's a coffee machine. Mm. to spread the yeah awareness. awareness yeah yeah what's your top tip advice for kids that have same aspiration as you don't want to make it to the top but they don't have a mentor like you said or someone that has went through what's your top tip advice based on what you went through that you could give to them you know when i was a kid i I didn't want to tell my coach that I, I I'm diabetic, um, not because I I was like uh, ashamed or something, but I didn't want want this this special treatment, treatment. you know. Yeah. Uh, and I I felt like some people when they figure out they were like every every step oh are you okay are you good are you okay yeah I'm okay I can take it myself even though I was ten years old, but. Later on, I figure out that, yeah, you just, yeah, don't keep it as a secret. It's, mm. it's normal. 
it's, it's so common these days and still more and more people getting diabetes. And I'm worried that we can't prevent it these days, but it is possible to live, uh, live with this condition. Just you, yeah, you need to take control of it before mm. it takes control over you mm. because it's, I think not everyone realized that diabetes affects everything in your life. But mm. also everything in your life affects diabetes. So yeah. your, your your glucose levels. It's it's not only food and drink. It's sleep. It's recovery. It's training, stress. Absolutely everything. Yeah, that is so true. Um, yeah, and I think I do. I think part of that. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's why you're so disciplined. Yeah, of I, course, of course. And I think it's a kind of a blessing in disguise that you picked that up so, so early, that skill. And you kind of pick up that skill to kind of make sure you to make sure you do everything right, make sure you do this, make sure you do that extra work, uh, da, 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 da. and then, like I say, like all these life experiences that shape you the way you are and how you are and then... Um, the way you approach and the way you look at life um so in a way it's kind of like if you i like if you wasn't diabetic i don't think you would have made that trip to holland or made this or done that or did it but because you instilled it like you have like a brain of a 60 year old in a 20 year old uh, body and that's why because you had to grow up and mature such a young age but obviously having diabetes is not a normal kid's life um but like i said it's it made you who you are and, and it facilitated you to grow up a lot faster yeah i i think i found out when i was 15 and when i joined uh, the leg Poznan academy and mm. i found out that the rest of the of the guys are still teenagers still children mm. But yeah, I'm all. I always try to just find something positive in it. And yeah. for example, for example, nutrition. I I just chose to to eat healthy, and for sure, it helped me also on the pitch. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's just a uh, choices, but life is all about choices. Mm. True, 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 true. So listen, we have uh, four minutes left until uh, it cuts off. Uh, tell us about your football goals for the for the next season, for this season, actually. Yeah, for this season, I yeah, like I said, fortunately didn't make it to to play some minutes this year. But first, uh, first game is sixth January, so okay. Okay. that's the plan. That's the plan to get some minutes, and then just uh, just. Uh, Get more and more minutes on the on the field, and uh, get back to this because, yeah. On one hand, it's it's twelve months I didn't play, and on the other hand, I don't feel like I didn't play twelve months. So that's that's positive. But still, one year in football, you know, it's a lot. Yeah, it is a long time. It is. Yeah, but it time. it goes opposite side as well. Like within one month, you can make huge progress. Yeah, true. That's true, and that's that's good that I don't feel like I didn't touch the ball, you know, for the for twelve months, mm. because I think I started uh, I started trainings on the field five months, five months after surgery. That is quick. Yeah, but of course that was uh, simple things, passing this kind of stuff, yeah. and uh, yeah, in my head. I thought I will be I will be done after six seven months, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's not always like this. But yeah. yeah, I just want to get back in the field and play and play and enjoy it, enjoy it again. That's that's the most important, because sometimes yeah. even if you even if you play on a good level, but you don't enjoy it, yeah, for, for what? Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, tell us, uh, tell us two minutes left. So tell us about uh, any good uh, teammates that you maybe played with in Holland or what's your like uh, 
did you have any any player that you could get inspired from in in Holland because as we know it's a football country so uh... well even the even the first team they played they played really really low level they uh, they played like a eighth tire something like this but they had I think few uh, ex professional players and uh, yeah, one from Greece. And it was a guy not at old, 30, 32 years old, something like this. But you could see the experience. And uh, on the field, it's always an inspiration. Mm. But also, also off the field, it's, you know, the guy was professional. But right now, he's running a restaurant. And there is a life after football. Mm. And and it's it's for everybody, almost everybody, because, yeah. Not everyone is on four hundred grand a week, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, that's that's also some lessons try to learn from everybody. Mm, that's cool. That's interesting. Yeah, where, where... Everyone is open minded. Everyone yeah. is that's one that's the one thing I've noticed. Everyone's open minded, no ego, everyone's learning. That's one thing I've noticed from all the guests that we've had. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to hear that. Yeah, yeah you, have the right, you have the right mindset to achieve what you want, I can tell you. Yeah, right. keep going. Yeah. Guys, Definitely. thank you very much. No it's, worries. Uh, was, was also inspirational. 